It is 7.50 Thursday morning, May the 14th. It's now time for KUGN's Cop Talk. I'm Grant McHill alongside Storm Kennedy. And he is crime prevention specialist Stephen Chambers from the Eugene Police Department joining us this morning. Good morning, Stephen. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Well, Stephen, we are right in the middle of spring, and that means, of course, it's time to be cautious about uh, some certain things in terms of crime. Yeah. Today we'll talk about uh, vehicle break-ins. And, of course, with the nice weather, it's not nice today, but it's, it's around the corner. Uh, people are out and about walking and biking on the bike paths. And then also uh, trailheads like, you know, Spencer Butte and and those other Ridgeline trails, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so with a nicer weather, people are out and they're bringing their cars uh, to those places. And uh, sometimes it's after work. Maybe you just want to go, you know, the longer days and nice weather, want to go hike after work. And uh, sadly, we see a lot of people who leave uh, things in their cars at those uh, places and the thieves know that. So they're, they're targeted pretty heavy. Um, so we want to remind people not to leave anything in your vehicle uh, when you go to um, these bike paths, or trailheads, et cetera. You know, Stephen, in the past, you've really focused on this, and you guys have done such a great job bringing awareness to it. And I know just even going to the the dog park over here at, at Autzen, you leave your stuff in the car, and that's a, that's a prime target as well. So with your efforts over the years, have you seen a decrease in these robberies, uh, breaking into cars at spots like that? Yeah, we have, I'd say. Um, we had a, a rash of uh, vehicle break-ins uh, last year, and uh, that was about, it was one person. I mean, there was probably a few other criminals that were up there hitting it. But um, so we uh, we did arrest him and uh, get him off the street. So we have seen a decrease. I think people are a lot more aware uh, than they used to be. We talk about it all the time. And it's a good thing. We just keep reminding people uh, because it's easy to do. You know, you're coming home from work and you forget your bags in the back seat or or uh, your cords for your cell phones and other things are plugged into the car. And really, we just need to remove all of that stuff so there's nothing in plain view uh, within the vehicle uh, because the the thieves, those are hot spots uh, for traffic and, and they know that. And so they're going to pick on those spots and, and look for those easy targets. You know, you said you did catch the one guy that did a rash of break-ins last year. How easy is it to catch the bad guy that's breaking <laughs> into cars? I mean, a lot of these spots, do they have surveillance cameras? Uh, no, they really don't have surveillance. And, um, you know, people go there, they park, and then they're on their way. So there's not a lot of, you know, I mean, you get some traffic through the through the parking lots, but mostly people are out hiking and walking. Uh, we do patrol those, um, but as you can imagine, they're on the outlying areas of town, so it's hard for us to get out there. Um so yeah, I mean it, it's 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 hard for us to catch them. Um, it takes a lot of a long time and a lot of work. Uh, in the case of the arrests that we have made, uh, sadly people got their credit cards stolen and they were used multiple times and multiple victims. And so eventually, with uh, video surveillance at different stores, uh, that sort of thing, bank records, then we're able to narrow it down. But it can take months, maybe even a year long. Mm. Take us through the thought process of, of the criminal, Stephen. I'm curious. If they see a car and there is something sitting there, that's probably an automatic go to it. But will they look, will they think that maybe the person on hiking put their, their wallet in the glove box or, or things like that? Or they simply go for things they can see? In our experience, they go for things that they can see. Um, it's just not worth it, I don't think, um, in, in their minds, uh, for them to break into a vehicle, you know, smash a window, just in the, there's a chance that there's something in there. Um <clears throat> So they, they usually go for what they can see. And like I said, it can be something as simple as a few power cords. You know, you got your I, uh, iPhone power cord plugged in and, you know, they collect things. So um, they use those. So with that said, when you go to say, you know, to go hike at Spencer Butte or whatever, if you put your wallet in the glove compartment, are you okay, do you think? Um, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the, if what, you wouldn't, yeah. I'm not going to either. <laughs> exactly. It's best not to leave anything in your vehicle, um, you know. Obviously, if you have a gym bag or something like that and you put it in the trunk just so there's not a bag inside your vehicle, you know, I think you're pretty safe. But I wouldn't leave my personal ID and credit cards and things like that in the vehicle. I would just take them with me. I love the one thing that you guys always remind us of is that if you do want to leave your gym bag in the trunk or your purse in the trunk, you put it in the trunk prior to getting to the location. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the location. I'm like, I just want to put it in my trunk. But they're watching. Yeah. They could be watching. And that then again, they can what? Break the window, open the trunk, yeah, pop get the your trunk stuff. Release. Yep, yep. So I just carry that bag along with me on the yeah, home. yeah. You know, and, and a lot of us aren't that. Um, oh, I don't know. Wouldn't look around the parking lot to see if there's people sitting in no, their cars right. watching us. Um, not that observant. So I mean, the more observant you are, as well, can really help. You know, we need citizens uh, to 
call and report things like that to us because we'll respond and check it out. You know, a suspicious guy in a car sitting up at the trailhead, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll Mm -hmm. come up there and check it out. Let me play devil's advocate for just a second, Storm. You said you always take your purse with you. Right. What about for people that feel maybe unsafe carrying something into those oh. secluded areas where maybe, you know, a criminal can come and just take that purse and run and there's nobody to help out? Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, if you can plan ahead, that's the best thing. You know, uh, t- you know, you can get little wallets, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, things to keep your ID in a credit card or something like that and a little uh, pocket in your in your shorts or whatever. Um, so plan ahead is the best thing and leave some of that stuff at home. That's where it's mainly safe, as long as your home's locked up. Whatever happened to the good old fanny pack, you guys, huh? (laughs) Bring it back. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Hmm. Well, great, great information. And that non-emergency phone number, Stephen, if somebody does see something suspicious, what's that number to call? 541-682-5111. He is Crime Prevention Specialist Stephen Chambers. Stephen, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you guys very much.